What's going on there guys? My name is Matt or Chewy as most of you all know me as and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. Today we find ourselves in the DA40 and we're going to do some flying around the Norwegian fjords. Today we're at Echo November Delta Uniform Bardufoss, which I believe is an Air Force base in northern Norway. I've had so many people request that I fly in this area of the world. And so we're down on the ramp here in Bardufoss and we're going to take this diamond up from Cold and Dark and just go and have a fly around. And I thought it'd be a nice idea to just go and fly around the fjords and the beautiful uh, area around this airport. And uh, whilst we do so, discuss a few things about the simulator just as a kind of a live commentary thing so let's get into the cockpit shall we and uh, we'll go and get things started the great thing about this uh, da40 is that it's super duper simple to get going there's not really a whole lot that you need to do so all we'll do is put the electrical master switch to the on position and as you can see things come to life we'll get the engine master switch to on uh, i'll put the uh, fuel pump switch on as well and then hopefully if we give it just a second we should be good to uh, turn the electrical master switch to start. And there we go. Let's put a little bit of power in. Great stuff. So position lights can go on. Strobe lights can go on. Um, and then I think we can turn the pitot heats on as well. That shouldn't be a problem to do. Um, I'll go and select the flaps to the takeoff position. Um, and I think... I think we're good. I'm not really too worried about anything else at the moment. Could turn on some instrument brightness if we wanted to or get a bit of flood lighting going on in here as well. Oh, that looks cool, doesn't it? Nice. Right, let's leave that like that. Um, let's go and turn the taxi light on and blind Gary there, bless him. We'll release the parking brake and then uh, we'll go and swing the aircraft around to the right to go and taxi out for departure. I love the kind of creaks that you get from this aircraft sounds brilliant so no routing or anything today we're just going to go for a uh, a general fly around i thought which might be quite a nice thing to do great stuff let's not get too crazy on ourselves with that uh, taxi speed now i'm certainly not watching my ground speed whatsoever uh, it's fine there we go so I think we'll uh, go into part. Let me go and have a look and see what kind of way do I fancy going today. Um, let me see if I can try and have a look a little bit more at the range. Oh, I'm definitely not selecting the, the, uh, the correct thing. Let's turn the nose to the right and depart out on runway 28 today. We'll put the landing light on now. And then hopefully that's enough runway to rock and roll with. If not, it will be a rather short video. Okay, right then. So nicely centered up. I'm not going to do any tests or anything like that for power checks. We'll just get this baby rolling nice and quickly. Okay, watch the RPM. Steadily increase that. Want to keep it in the green band. Not too sure what kind of speed we're looking to rotate in this aircraft. Sounds are just brilliant. So watch out for the load there. You can see it's in the yellow band, but we'll keep going for now. Plenty of runway, I think. All right, let's go at about 70 knots. Slowly rotate, add a little bit of trim in there. We'll take flaps up just to help with that speed. And I'll keep trimming the aircraft. And uh, we'll depart out. Great stuff. So we'll just go and have a look around. Go and see some of the beautiful views that we've got. I'm using live weather at the moment. But uh, I tell you what, I'm going to ruin the immersion for a moment. Because I actually think I'd quite like a little bit more daylight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the weather tab. And just bring back the sun a tad. If I can. It doesn't seem to be making that much difference. Let's go to about there. Let's go to about 1650 local time. And that just gives us a little bit more light to work with. So, the topic of today's video, what I really wanted to discuss whilst we fly around today is a question that I, I think I, I've been talking about a lot of the questions that I get very regularly on my live stream. 
Um, and the most popular question that I've been asked so far is, will you quit flying in prepared Annex Plane 11 as soon as Microsoft Flight Simulator releases? I don't quite know where this question stemmed from and why so many people are asking it, but it has just been, I've just been inundated with questions about it. Um, and I think it's, it's you know, maybe a mixture of the, the hype around the simulator and people just expecting it to blow the other simulators away to such a degree that it will be impossible to go back to other simulators. But, I, you know, I really want to make it clear. I certainly do not plan to, um, to move away from any simulator whatsoever. The great thing about Microsoft Flight Simulator releasing for, for me as a content creator and just as a, a general simmer is the fact that I'm now going to have a choice of even more content to create. Um, you know, prepared with its latest iteration of, of version 5 and with X-Plane gradually getting stronger as well, both of those simulators are in really great places, I feel. And I'm hoping that the release of Microsoft Flight Simulator will um, further challenge the other developers as we get a terrain warning will further you know um, challenge the other developers to improve their work as well and vice versa as prepared and X plane 11 grow I hope that um, it uh, you know inspires the Microsoft and Asobo Studios developers to also improve um, with their work and so I'm, I, I'm definitely planning on keeping the other Sims as part of my repertoire, for, for lack of a better phrase. There's no doubt whatsoever in my mind that I'm going to be flying X-Plane 11 and prepared for a very long time to come. However, I feel that with the current state of Microsoft Float Simulator and where things are at right now in this simulator, um, I feel that I'm going to be doing a very different type of flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator to what I currently do for the most part on my live stream. Um, and it's the kind of flying that we're doing now, going and checking out areas of the world that I've maybe never seen before. I'll admit that I have flown to Bardufoss before, but um, I've only done it um, in an airliner, so I've not really specifically been able to you know, fly low and slow and really get a good feel for the area. And that's one thing that I'm really loving the most about this simulator is just the ability to be able to hop into an aircraft like this DA-40 here, start it up in a matter of seconds and be in the air and exploring somewhere new from a whole new point of view. And as you can see, you know, these Norwegian fjords, they do not disappoint. The, the level of density with the autogen with the trees here is just ridiculous. You guys won't be able to see it on the screen, but I'm getting a, a stable 40 to 50 FPS right now. And uh, hopefully you guys can see it looking and performing nicely at the same time. And that, that's the big thing that's gonna be the big kind of question on release for this simulator is, you know, what's it like to try and get an equal measure of performance and visuals as well. And so, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited for that, but I just wanted to kind of clear that, you know, that initial topic up. By no means am I going to stop flying prepared and X-Plane 11 on the release of this simulator. It's going to be a very different type of flying in this simulator to me, to the current ones. And I'm excited to explore that for the very first time in my content creation. Right, what I think I'll, we'll do is we'll circle back. I don't want to get too lost and lose the airport. I'm just struggling not to be looking out the window here, so I'm not really keeping an eye on my RPM or anything. It's, it's actually a really interesting thing. I've, I've got a, um, a couple of friends who are doing their private pilot's license at the moment. And I, I, apparently quite a lot of real-world flight instructors for, uh, instructors, sorry, for private pilot licenses are able to tell if... Uh, a student of theirs has good experience in a flight simulator um, and, and one of the ways that they're able to tell that apparently is because um, us flight simmers spend a lot of time looking at the instruments and not really looking a whole lot out the window 
I've only got about 90 minutes real world um, flying experience uh, in Seattle last year, as I've talked about numerous times before. And um, I remember being fixated on the instruments and really concentrating on those. And it was, it was a, a really dangerous trait because it meant I wasn't you know, looking out the window at some of the absolutely stunning views of the surroundings because I was you know, so much so concentrating on trying to keep level flight and getting my trim correct and, and, you know, and all of those different things and looking at airspeed, blah, 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 blah. So I feel in Microsoft Flight Simulator that for me, it's the exact opposite of that. I feel that I'm spending way too much time looking out the window because I'm having such a great time and, uh, and, and just really taking in all of these crazy views for the first ever time. And then I'm not spending much time looking at my instruments, so I'm making mistakes more and more often. So that's a nasty habit to get into as well. I guess it goes both ways, right? I guess it, I guess it both goes ways. Let's go and have a look at some outside views, shall we? It's so barren here. I think one thing that, that I, you know, I'd quite like to point out is, I mean, there's still things to work on with this simulator. And I guess that's another topic that we can go into. This is a prime example. So have a look up here. We've got all this absolutely stunning terrain, which, you know, in my opinion, looks absolutely faultless. And then suddenly we've got an area here that is by no means in, in a good state. We've got kind of crazy pond lakes, waterfalls kind of coming out of nowhere and, and yeah, it just, it, it, well, I mean, like, it, it doesn't take Einstein to work out that that is not correct. And you can see it manipulating and changing as I fly nearer to it. But I think this kind of visual image here is an indicator to you guys that Microsoft Flight Simulator on release day is not going to be polished. It is not going to be perfect. And I think... Rightly so, a lot of people have been setting the bar for their standards very, very, very high for this simulator, which is great. But I don't want then for people to mistake high standards for them just thinking that on the 18th of August, when this goes public, it's going to be a finished project. Microsoft have publicly stated that this is a project that they you know, hope to continue for a decade. That's a hell of a long time. That is a hell of a long time. God, I'll be 36. That's a scary thought. And so, I, I you know, I, I think that needs to be a, a really pronounced, um, that's not the word I'm looking for, but I think that needs to be something that's, I, I really can't state enough, that I don't want, I don't want people to feel like that they should be disappointed when this simulator releases. But just be mindful that not everything is complete in the simulator and Asobo Studios and Microsoft are well aware of that and there's nothing wrong with that because it means that the simulator will grow and improve over time and I'm really excited to see its future uh, as much as I'm excited to see it release I think I'm, I'm most excited to see where this simulator is in, in a couple of years' time. That's the really exciting part for me. Oh my god, look at that view. That's just ridiculous. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I've been flying Microsoft Flight Simulator now since September 2019, and I still to this very day as of recording in early August 2020 I still get astounded at the views you know I've got no idea where we are right now really I know we're near Bardu Foss Airport but that's about it but do I care no I do not and it feels like especially in stunning areas of the world like Norway you can just you know go around the, the peak of a bit of terrain and suddenly it opens up into a stunning new area to explore. And we've got the whole of the Earth to explore like this. I've never seen this view before, but look at it. Again, a few unpolished little elements here, but it, it doesn't take away from the beauty of the entirety of the scene. 
just stunning. Just stunning. I cannot wait for you all to get this in your hands. I hope that doesn't sound like an arrogant thing and me being like, nah, 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 I've got the sim and you don't, but now that we are so close to release, I think it's almost time that content creators like me, you know, stop what we've been doing for the past few weeks. We've had our chance to show you what the simulator looks like, how it performs, its highs and its lows, its ups and its downs. And uh, I truly feel now it's time for you guys to, you know, finish that wait and experience it for yourselves. So please let me know exactly what your first plans are in the comment section. That would be a really cool thing. I'd, I'd love to know what all of you guys plan to do in this simulator on release day. Is there any specific area of the world you want to visit first? I think quite a lot of people are probably going to be going and visiting their houses, which I think is really cool. It's certainly the first thing that I did in the simulator. Today's video is also my first video in full 4K on the channel. I did a little five minute apology video on yesterday's uh, video. I did two videos yesterday for Sunday. One showing my uh, PC specs and my settings in the preview build and another one apologizing for the lack of 4K content in this sim. So today is my first full 4K video. Again, I'd love to have some feedback from you guys with uh, production, whether you're happy with the, uh, the general look, whether I need to tweak my render settings a little bit more in my editing software, whether audio needs tweaking. I, I always want to improve as a content creator. I'm a bit of a stickler for production, as those of you who watch my Twitch live streams will know. And so, um, yeah, feedback, as long as it's constructive, obviously, is always very, very much appreciated. Okay, tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll head into this rather large area of the valley and then uh, we'll make our way back to Bardufoss. Now, I've not landed this aircraft yet, so you guys are about to experience Chewie landing a, uh, a DA-40 for the first ever time, which is probably going to create some chuckles in the comment section as well, maybe. I also feel that there are times in this kind of live commentary mode where nothing really needs to be said. Does that make sense? You know, when you, you see certain views, I don't need to say anything. I just need to let the sim do all the talking. All right, we'll position ourselves out to the right and then we'll make a swinging 180 degree turn. I've been so fixated on all of the terrain. I've not even had a look to see how beautiful the lighting is. Look, all the lighting casting off the clouds there even so far in the distance i'm circling with my mouse it just looks alive okay right let's see how this baby turns shall we try and hold our altitude watch that bank angle don't fly this thing like it's a fighter jet and then we'll see if we can go and find bardu foss again A little bit more rudder, I think. Look at that. It's, do you know what I mean? Like, I hope you guys, when I say the simulator feels alive, I hope you guys understand what I mean by that. You just look down at the cars and, and the different types of building in the different areas of the world. It's not just generic autogen that looks exactly the same everywhere you go. You know, when you travel around different places across the globe, the uh, the buildings change, the facades are different, and it, it makes all the difference, in my opinion, for that immersion that I talk about so much in this simulator.
Low fuel. <laughs> well, that's going to be interesting. I wonder if we'll make it back to Bardufoss. I've certainly not uh, looked at my fuel level. I kind of just loaded in and didn't take a look at it. Now, can we switch? Set emergency fuel valve to emergency. Well, we might have to do that at some point. Fuel trans to on. Let's see if there's a... I'm assuming there's a right tank in this aircraft. That looks like a, a fuel port there. So I'm assuming we can switch over to the right-hand side and hopefully get a little bit more fuel going over there. We'll see. We'll find out. We'll find out in the next few minutes whether Chewie's pressed the correct button or not. Take your bets in the chat now as to whether I have or not. Finding that this aircraft is really nice in terms of stability. I've really not had to do a whole lot in terms of trim. And uh, this is something that I talked about in, in another video, is the progression of this simulator. In early alpha stages, trimming in, in the sim was impossible. It was really, really difficult. It was not fun at all. But now I'm, uh, I'm really finding it um, a lot easier. It feels natural trimming the aircraft now, which is how it should be. I'm not a real world pilot by any means, but even in my very limited 90 minutes real world flying experience, trimming came natural. It just felt like the right thing to do to keep the aircraft stable. And as this simulator's progressed further and further through alpha and beta, I'm feeling that it's getting better with that as well in the, in the trimming aspect of things. Another question that I get very regularly is, Chewy, what's your opinion on the flight model? And I'm kind of like, uh, uh, mm. I'm a flight simulator content creator. I should probably know the answer to these things, but I don't. I, I don't hide that I'm not a real world pilot. I don't know the ins and outs of flight models of real world aircraft and exact specifications as to what is right and what is wrong. But what I can do is give it a general opinion on how things feel to fly in the sim because I do a hell of a lot of flying in simulators. And yeah, the journey of this sim, I certainly feel like the flight model's improved without a shadow of a doubt. Right, is that the airport over there? I think it might be. That kind of looks like it, doesn't it? So what we'll do is we'll head back in that general direction and see if we can find it. It, it looks like that warning's gone now. I've got an advisory message. I'm not too sure what for. It's buggered off now. Um, We'll go and see if we can get in safely without any problems. Again, I've got no idea what the approach speed is on this aircraft or anything, but that's part of the fun. Look at that. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So, final thing that I really want to talk about before we uh, shoot this approach. There we go. That's definitely the airport there, isn't it? Yeah, I can see the taxiway lights. Uh, yeah, so the last topic that I really wanted to talk about in this live commentary is, well, live commentary. What do you guys think? Do you guys prefer videos on my channel where... You know, I do specific things and have a pre-recorded commentary with a script that I create and gameplay footage in the background that's edited. Do you guys prefer me doing these kind of live commentaries where we just get set up in a plane, go and explore a new area and talk on a particular topic? What kind of thing would you guys like to see from me? I'd love to know in the comment section as well. Would you like a mix of both? Take the first stage of flat now. So far, I've concentrated on a mixture. I've done some informative videos with pre-recorded kind of scripted commentary. And I've also done, you know, these kind of live commentary things. I've tried to, to mix it up as best as I can. All right, now I've got to watch out for the trim. We'll take the last stage of flaps now through 98 knots. It says on the flap lever there. 
Speed's coming back with two right, two red on the pappies. Let's just sort out my trim now. And yeah, I'm kind of just eyeballing it when it comes to the speed. So please forgive me if I'm approaching way too fast. Okay, we'll make the early turn onto final. Don't want to turn too late. Find that we've got to swing back in. It's showing full red on the pappies, but I mean, we're fully visual now. I'm happy. There we go. Fuel right is low now, so it's a good time to land. I think a very good time to land. Just get rid of that caution light. Okay, lined up nicely on final. Approach for runway 28. Got to be careful about the slope on the runway here. Look at how evident that slope is now as we cross over the piano tiles and slowly bring back the throttles. We yellow. There we go. Little bit of a thump, but we're down. That's the most important thing. So we'll apply some toe brakes. And there we are, safely back with only two low fuel warnings. That was very enjoyable for me, and I hope it was for all of you guys as well. We'll vacate the runway here, and uh, as I taxi back into stand, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Those of you who have stuck around all the way to the end, I hope I didn't bore you to sleep. If you did enjoy the video and you wanted to leave any feedback or constructive criticism or anything on any of those topics that we talked about today, please let me know in the uh, in the comment section below you're more than welcome to post even though i don't get to respond to every single question or anything here i certainly do read the vast majority of, of the comments on videos um if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more of this type of video please leave a like and of course to keep up to date with everything microsoft flight simulator related and to see more content from this incredible simulator you're also welcome to subscribe to the channel as well that's going to do it from me for today, though, folks. Thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.